Issues and Tissue, a contemporary magazine program that engages and discusses issues of development within and outside the state. The program brings to the fore reigning topics like education, politics, agriculture, just name it, while we examine the nitty gritty of the issue in focus. Join me, BC Akpaida, on African Independent Television, AIT, for an exciting time. Issues and Tissue. If we can think it, we can discuss it. Nigeria currently has a population of over 210 million people. The country's population growth continues to rise with over 5,000 births daily and over 2 million unintended pregnancies recorded annually. World Population Day is celebrated every year on July 11. The event seeks to focus attention on the urgency and importance of population issues. On this day, important topics that affect population are discussed, from family planning to contraception, gender equality, mother and child health. The theme for this year's World Population Day is, rights and choices are the answer, whether baby boom or bust. Today on the program, we will be discussing issues of family planning and access to contraceptives in the COVID-19 era as a means of checking increasing population. Joining us on this discourse are family planning and contraception professionals Eunice Elendu and Uguamaka Aginam, representing Mary Stopes International Organization, Nigeria. Issues and Tissue, a contemporary magazine program that engages and discusses issues of development within and outside the state. The program brings to the fore reigning topics like education, politics, agriculture, just name it while we examine the nitty gritty of the issue in focus. Join me, BC Akpaida, on African Independent Television, AIT, for an exciting time. Issues and tissue. If we can think it, we can discuss it. All right, thank you for joining us again today on the program, Issues and Tissue, on African Independent Television, AIT. My name is Nosarimi Uso, and with me in the studio today is Mrs. Uguamaka Akina and Mrs. Eunice Eledu. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Um, please tell us, um, okay, introduce yourself, starting with um, you, Mrs. Eunice. Okay, my name is Eunice Inusa Elendu. I work with my students as a clinical trainer, quality advisor. Regional okay. advisor for South South. Okay, thank you very much, Mrs. Ogamaka. My name is Ogamaka again. I'm, I'm the regional communication and marketing advisor, Southern Operation for my research international organization, Nigeria. Okay, thank you. Now, um, let me let me start with you, Mrs. Um, Eunice. Uh, tell us a little about Maristop. What is Maristops and what do they do? Maristops has a mission of children by choice and not by chance. Um, so basically what Maristops does is reaching out to the unreached to provide family planning services all around. We have different channels, we have the outreach, we have the clinics. In Nigeria we have um, some clinics, we have in Lagos, we have in Abuja for South South. We have Edo. We also have in um, rivers and, and as well. So basically what we do is to provide to ensure quality is provided, not just the family planning services. If you are assessing, if you want to access family planning, we are sure and we pride ourselves with the quality that we can provide at all times. All right, thank you very much, Mrs. Finis. Now, uh, Mrs. Ogamaka, July 11th every year is um, the day set aside as World Population Day. Now, why is this day relevant and what is the theme for this year's celebration? Okay, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, July 11th is celebrated worldwide as World Population Day. And I think it's quite necessary because the size of uh, a nation's population has a major impact on its development and operations. And the bigger or larger a country population is, 
the more difficult it is to develop at a quicker rate. So I think uh, it's very, very necessary that we look in worse, or any nation need to look in worse as regards to how the population is growing. Looking at the enabling factors, what are those things that are available to sustain the growing uh, population? And also looking at this, um, the 2021 world population thing, is rights and choices are the answer. Whether baby boom or boost, so you find out it's, it's even in line with our organization's mission okay. that we are saying children by choice, not by chance. So we need to allow people to make right decision as they affect them. Okay. Thank you very much. much. Now, um, what population day? I believe one of the factors, uh, one of the issues that comes to bear when you talk about population is the issue of family planning the issue of um, use of contraceptives, which of course this um, episode of the program today is centered on checking population through access to contraception, especially in the COVID-19 era. Now, you tell us what, what is contraception or what are contraceptives? Contraceptives are it depends on the way we look at it. Some are natural, some are artificial. But it's just a means of protecting oneself from getting an uh, undesired, let me use that word, pregnancy. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Eunice, are there, are there different forms or kinds of contraceptives available, especially in Nigeria? Yes, we have uh, different types of forms. Uh, forms of family planning is categorized. We have the permanent method, we have the long acting reversible method, we have the short term method and of course natural method. For the permanent method is also like you know, we're talking about the vasectomy and the bilateral tubal ligation. For the tubal ligation for uh, the tubal ligation we're just saying that the tubes are ligated and of course is very very effective. Then we talk about the long acting reversible method, which is also another long acting. Why it's called long acting? Because we believe that immediately after removal, they should be able to resume back to fertility almost immediately. So those are the IUDs for ten years, the Jardels for five years, the Implanol for three years. Okay. Now you made mention of um, family planning earlier. How does family planning help to check? the increasing population in Nigeria? Well, family planning has empowered individuals and women to make the right decisions uh, concerning their reproductive health rights through the awareness of modern family planning. And what it does is, of course, it prevents unwanted pregnancy. So and if there are no uh, unwanted pregnancy, that means we are not talking about, we are talking about prevention of having nuisance in the community. And of course, it helps the family to plan well. And if the family is planning, uh, if the planning is the family is planning well, we are basically saying that uh, the family will have that particular number of children, desired children, that they will be able to train in the community. So of course, if family planning, if a woman decides to give birth to twelve children, that's not planning. More especially, it depends. More especially in our community, that when you want to buy one cup of curry today, you know how much. It's how expensive it is today. So we are just saying that family plan, what family plan does is obtain the kind of prevent that unwanted growth of population. All right, thank you very much. Uh, now, Mrs. Ubuamaka, now the CPR, that is um, the contraceptive prevalence rate in Nigeria, seems to be very low. Now, what is the reason for this? low CPR in Nigeria. Okay. And thank you for that question. The major factor um, is basically on uh, so many things. It's not just one. We have so many factors that are making the CPR in Nigeria to be low. One of the factors are uh, can look at uh, the culture. Culture and religious uh, factors. Is, is a factor that is also affecting the, the CPR in country. 
Then uh, we can also look at our Atraka society. You know, in as much as in definition, people will tell you it's women's right, you know, to make informed and available choices as it regards to contraceptives. Then you find out they still have factors hindering most women, even among the literate. Before you find out going to a health center, a health facility, a service provider to assess family planning, you still have to take permission from the husband or family. Some also rely, my priest said, I should not take a method. So another thing is uh, ignorance is also a factor. Low awareness creation. So I think uh, there are so many factors affecting the CPR. Um, apart from all these community factors, we can look at institutional factors too. Sometimes the commodities may not be available. The commodities may not be available. You know, um, there are other factors like um, if you look at the documentation. Now, uh, let's let's talk a bit about this the issue of um, unavailable commodities. Now, in Nigeria, for example, I believe government has a stake in this. Yeah, government should also you know be involved in you know assisting organizations that are into family planning, you know, um, educating people and providing contraceptives. But for example, um, the national budget for family planning from 2020 actually reduced in 2021. The national budget for family planning in 2019 was reduced in 2020. And that of 2020, was also reduced in 2021. Do you think this is, you know, part of the reason why these commodities are unavailable or not accessible as it were? It can, it can be a factor because if it's not budgeted, it won't come down from heaven. But I think uh, basically what need done is uh, still doing advocacy. You know, consistent advocacy to the Federal Ministry of Health and see how they can meet with the legislature so that the budget can be improved on. Because so long it's not budgeted, that's which is not that it's not that at all. It yeah, is it the, the good budget, yeah. at least that can take care of all these things. If it's not reflected, there's no harm, there's no way, there's no magic one can do to actualize that. But basically what we need to do is still the federal government, and especially the federal ministry of health, they will still push, pushing, making legislation, move, moving to uh, meeting with the legislators, and let's see how this can be configured into the project, because it's a key issue. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Sukunamaka. Um, now, Mrs. Eunice, we're in a pandemic era, and a lot of things have happened in this era, especially the um, lockdown. People are restricted to movements and a lot of other things. Now, what is the level of access to contraceptives in the pandemic era? Well, the level of access, there are different sort of thoughts, hypotheses, okay. saying that um, for some, the level of access is actually has increased based on the availability of individuals at home. You know, usually sometimes work can tend to take you out and you don't really have the time to access family planning. But some school of thoughts are saying that um, the level is just normal. It's not really like, um, they didn't really go up. Why some school of thoughts are saying that, uh, well, it's declined. Why? Because the pandemic has uh, made uh, individuals to come together, probably couples to come together and this coming together has made them to know each other, to get to know each other very well, and this has resulted to a lot of separations, divorce. So, uh, so that's another school of thought saying that. So another school of thought is saying that because of the lockdown, schools are locked down, and of course, if you know for the young girls and boys, the fertility level is a little bit high, and because it's high, there's a time for 
exploitation. They try to, they are bored for God's sake at home doing nothing. So they tend to, to fall back to each other and engage in other activities that we all know about. So, um, because based on these activities, uh, for some, they access family planning, they go for family planning to prevent these uh, pregnancies and stuff. Some they don't. For couples at home that are together, and because they know, some are actually aware that we need this family planning because we know that this is a time of like a heat period. Yeah. Just like that heat period for the dogs, that uh, it must happen. Uh, what they really do is they go, they go for to get those services, family planning, making the demand a little bit high. But like I said, it depends on different school of thoughts different and hypotheses. All right. Uh, now. Um, Madam Obamaka, correct. Um, Twenty-four percent is what should be the CPM in Nigeria. Twenty-four, twenty-four. Twenty. Twenty-four percent. Okay. Yeah. Except, except it has been increased recently. But right now, uh, Nigeria has about seventeen percent thereabouts. How do you think this um, twenty-four percent can be achieved by twenty twenty-four? This is 2021. Okay, so let me just answer. Okay. Sorry. In July 2017, um, the federal government with other stakeholders and um, private uh, individuals uh, came together and said and pledged that by the end of 2020, they should be able to achieve 24, 27 percent of, of contraceptive okay. by all women. By 2020. 2020. Mm -hmm. okay. That's it. okay, so it wasn't really achieved. Why? Because um, there was this level of uh, availability of funds, like she said, availability of consumables, commodities in the facility. They want to, the, the government are saying this this service should be provided free of charge, and yet the commodities are not there to provide the services. And advocacy, advocacy, you know, uh, there's this passion that some have for advocacy. If you have passion, if I have passion for my work, I do it wholeheartedly. But, and if I don't have passion for my work, you just find that I'll fail. And I'm just doing it for the sake of money. So we need these advocates, advocates to go out there and advocate very well concerning um, passionate creation of awareness, then collaboration with relevant partners. The government cannot do this alone. They really need to collaborate with other partners to be able to achieve this thing. Like with Maristos, for instance, we are known for family planning. We believe should, uh, every child should be by choice, not by chance. So, um, and we also see issues like uh, procurement, collaboration with relevant partners and stakeholders in the timely procurement. The, we are saying the government kept talking about, sometimes you, can, you hear something about uh, availability of funds. So we're talking about timely availability of funds in those facilities. We shouldn't have stock out in the facility. Those are some of the reasons why we find out that we are not meeting those targets. All right, thank you very much, Ms. Eunice. Um, this is Issues and Tissue on African Independent Television, and we are discussing um, accessibility of contraceptives in the COVID-19 era. We'll come back after the short break, after the short break to continue the conversation. Don't go anywhere. Issues and Tissue a contemporary magazine program that engages and discusses issues of development within and outside the state. The program brings to the fore raining topics like education, politics, agriculture, just name it, while we examine the nitty-gritty of the issue in focus. Join me, BC Akpaida, on African Independent Television, AIT, for an exciting time. Issues and tissue, if you can think it, we can discuss it. All right, welcome back and thank you for staying with us on the program where we are discussing access to contraceptive in the COVID-19 era. Now, uh, Mrs. Obamaka, let's dive a little bit into um, domestic violence issues, gender-based violence issues in Nigeria. Now, how does this affect the use of contraceptive amongst Okay. Uh, looking at gender-based violence, you know it's uh, it's quite wide. It depends on the angle we are looking at it. Um, if a woman is not stable at home, definitely it, it can affect her 
positively or negatively as regards to assess the family plan. Okay. Because she may not be taking the thinking right. And in such a situation, that woman can decide and own up on her own without even taking maybe permission mm -hmm. from anybody. Just to go out and assess family plan on her own. And you can find out that other issues based on gender issues at home, maybe a woman has given birth to, say, seven girls, no boy, and the husband is still insisting. It means the male child. I need the male child. child. Such can lead to serious crisis at home. Wife battery. So the issue of gender-based violence is, for me, I, I see it as a topic of its own because it's quite rich, but it can affect positively, negatively, access to family planning, depending on the woman in goods. Okay. Now, um, definitely the issue of um, gender-based violence or domestic violence is an issue we critically look into. On, on a separate um, episode. Okay, now, Mrs. Um, Eunice, is there, is there an age limit for people who should use contraceptive? Well, I would say yes, and I was saying well, based on factors that I'm going to talk about, if you look at the CPR, the CPR is talking about the age of 15 to 49. 49. Yeah. And if you look at Menaki, Menaki is saying the year she started menstruating, that's the first year. Okay. And her the men, of course, we're talking about the last semester she saw her menses or how it stopped finally. So, if, if we, we are saying, if we are looking at the age limits, uh, we are not saying that once you start your menses, you're going to commence uh, family planning or you commence a joint house. So, that's why I'm saying it varies. So, that's basically so the age, the limitation. And sometimes, if you look at there are some conditions based on the age, because we use this, there's this eligibility criteria we use, the WHO, we will call it the WHO we use. Okay. So for any age or for any condition that you have, we definitely must make reference to it to know if that person is eligible or not. Okay. Now, are there risk factors to using contraceptives? Um, risk factors, so per se, um, it depends on what you're saying because if I get pregnant today, there are risk factors of pregnancy. Yes, of course, because you know, I think or oh, most people the knowledge they have is when they hear family planning or when they hear contraceptive, family especially family. not the usual maybe use of uh, protection you can just go to a pharmaceutical um, store to get. Mm -hmm. They have this feeling of this is kind of a risky process. Oh, well, like I said, I wanted to give instances with pregnancy because when you take family planning services, there are things we call side effects, and those side effects will surely present itself. And just like pregnancy, a woman knows yet, a woman um, she craves, so it's based on hormonal uh, changes that that woman has, and it's the same thing with family planning. So, we for a woman to access family planning, she will definitely experience some side effects like backache, changes in her menstrual period. Um, changes, I mean, it's either it's heavy or it's low. So, some women will now like, uh, complain of low back pain with IUD, low abdominal pain, and stuff like that. But then, if you talk about pills, we for pills, sometimes some women are actually predisposed to clotted blood, blood clotting, and maybe stroke. But then, how many women take pills today? <laughs> Very few. So, so many people don't take pills because a lot of women these days prefer taking the long acting to reduce the hospital visits. Okay. Yes, to reduce hospital visits, to reduce uh, the effort of always trying to remember when am I supposed to be, you know, stuff like that. So, you just right. find that people. Thank you very much. Yeah. Now, uh, Mrs. Ubamaka, earlier you mentioned, you know, when you're talking about forms of contraceptive, you mentioned natural, you mentioned artificial. Can you break this? A little bit down for us. When you say natural, what are the natural cons contraceptive okay. that are available and also the artificial? And then tell us how effective are these contraceptives? 
like the natural uh, family planning methods, as one we call the lamp, lactationary, lactational amenorrhea methods, which in the layman's understanding of language is exclusive breastfeeding. So when a woman is breast and breastfeeding exclusively, you find out that sometimes they don't menstruate, no menstruation, which means it can keep them for the duration that doing the exclusive breastfeeding until they win the baby before you talk of getting pregnant. Okay. So that's an external method. We also have the beat where they count. You know, this is my menses. It will last for four days. After these four days, no more. Population will come. So some people also use it. All right. right. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Obamaka and Mrs. Eunice for you know educating us today on issues of family planning, access to contraceptive in Nigeria. Um, that's the much we can take on the program today. The key, the key statement there is that having children is by choice and should not be by chance. In case you need to, you know, get in touch with. Maristope International, the toll free numbers are scrolling on the screen and the address is also there on the screen. And don't forget, we'll be with you again same time next week. Until then, stay safe and have a wonderful day. My name is Nusarime Uso. Thank you for joining us. Issues and Tissue, a contemporary magazine program that engages and discusses issues of development within and outside the state. The program brings to the fore raining topics like education, politics, agriculture, just name it, while we examine the nitty gritty of the issue in focus. Join me, BC Akpaida, on African Independent Television, AIT, for an exciting time. Issues and tissue. If you can think it, we can discuss it.